This is firefighter Raphael Poirier for Firehouse Subs. Introducing the new spicy Cajun chicken sub, Cajun seasoned grilled chicken breast, zesty cherry peppers, and house-made Cajun mayo. Just $5.55 for a medium. Remember, a portion of every sub you buy helps provide life-saving equipment for first responders. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. Limited time only, plus tax. Participating locations. Firehouse Subs would donate a minimum of $1 million in 2019 to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation by donating 0.11% of every purchase. Hey, what up, everybody? My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And we are Paratruth Radio, coming at you live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from blogtalkradio.com forward slash Paratruth Radio. Um, now, this is not only a special episode because it's a New Year's episode, but it is also the first episode that Eric and I have done together in the same room at the same time since... 2010, and uh, it's definitely going to be a good one. <laughs> Hold on. Do you have some new ones for this episode? Or do no. You? I... Oh, you lazy son of a gun. All right. I'll, I'll have to do some uh, research because it's... I've got a bunch of them, but I've got this one. Yeah. Or this one. <laughs> and this is going back to our beginning days, too, playing with the sound bites. Yeah. <laughs> Prepare for the next two hours of sound bites. <laughs> Well, it looks like apparently I only did an hour and a half for this episode. I didn't think I did that, but... You're killing me. You're killing me, man. All right. That's fine. <laughs> so, all right. So, we are going live here uh, for our New Year's special. Uh, it's kind of going to be just a mishmash of some things that uh, we've kind of probably already discussed, uh, as well as who knows how off topic we will get <laughs> probably very very off topic <laughs> but uh we do want you guys to know that uh it has been six months already since we've been on air uh it's been fun and we are trying to do our best to keep improving the show uh we started our indiegogo account again um to raise funds to do that uh we were asked to explain what these funds are going to be used for. So I figured I would do that on air. It does show in the Indiegogo campaign what the funds are used for, but we'll go into a little detail here. Uh, we need to build our own website. Um, not only build, but we want the uh, URL to be paratruthradio.com, not whatever website that's hosting the website and then our name. Um, we also want to upgrade our uh, our uh, subscription to Blog Talk Radio to the highest setting, so that way we can put a playlist or a play button on our website, so we can just launch straight from our website. It would be much easier to say paratruthradio.com instead of blogtalkradio.com forward slash paratruthradio. Um, as well as, let me read from the story here because it's a lot that we're going to be using it for. Uh, we are also uh, want to put advertisements up on Facebook uh, and try and advertise on Twitter as well. Um, and then also with that subscription to Blog Talk, it kind of upgrades our sound quality and uh, maybe get some equipment that will run a little bit easier for the show as well. So that's what the funds are going towards. Uh, not putting it in my pocket for anything because all the money for the show is coming out of my pocket and Eric's pocket anyway. So, um, mm -hmm. And trust me, we're running out of, uh, <laughs> yeah, low, out of money. Quickly. Low funds is <laughs> not good. So uh, that's what the funds are there are, are being collected for. Uh, I hope you guys want to check it out and get us to our goal we are definitely wanting to improve everything for you 
and I'm putting the link in the chat room for anybody who's listening live uh, and you're wanting to get into the chat, just scroll down to the bottom of the screen there and hop in our chat room. If you need to join Blog Talk Radio to get in, in the chat, it's really easy, really fast. Just put in a username, password, fill out a little bit of information that you need um, from Blog Talk Radio and hop in, in there. We definitely want your guys' opinions on things. Um, you can also call our call in line, which is 914-205-5558. And you can also find us on Facebook and on Twitter. You just hit that like button and the uh, the follow buttons, and uh, you will get our updates for each and every show. Nicely done. Thanks. Thanks. Uh-huh. So um, now that we're in the same room, bundle each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought that'd come a little later. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Um, so it's been six months already since we started this show. We've covered God, what have we covered all so far? Friday the thirteenth was our very first, first episode. episode. Yeah. Um uh Aliens. Aliens was the second uh was, was it a trilogy or just it's, a two parter? No, I think we did three. Okay. Um Bigfoot, Mothman. Werewolves, vampires, a couple of those with special guests. Mm-hmm. Uh, white, uh, yeah, zombies. Um, we have more. Hold on. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I'm, we just. What was our last one? When we just did. Yeah. That was Christmas. That was. Oh yeah, Christmas. I'm not thinking of that one. Anti Claus. We did the Anti Claus and uh, talked about Jesus. Jesus. Uh, let's see, episodes. God, it's been so many. In Wendigo. It. Wendigo. Wendigo. That's, yeah. And um, we were asked to do the the Jersey Devil, and the Jersey Devil will be our next episode, guys. So stay tuned for that. David Rufino, Unholy Communion, which Eric had to miss, unfortunately. Uh, Don Dondiri, uh UFOs, ETs, and alien abductions. I didn't even think of the guests. I was trying to think of all the <laughs> ones that we've done all ourselves. The, yeah, all the topics. Uh, Jody Cook, uh, who was the uh, Bigfoot-ologist or whatever they call themselves, Bigfoot hunters, whatever. Uh, Brian Talking the Herd, which was about back in the day. Uh, Bill Hall, the world's most haunted house. Varla Ventura, who was an awesome guest. Uh, all of our guests were awesome. And I have been told that I need to watch how I say that because I apparently tell everybody that they're the best guests that we've ever had. So <laughs> uh, Von Brashler, uh, Chupacabra, the Halloween episode, Astral Projection, Out of Body Experiences, Old Investigations, Off the Trails Paranormal Society, and Greg Grabowski from U.S. Zombie Outbreak Response Team. That's a lot of, a lot of stuff that we covered in just a yeah. six months. Yeah, and the only one I have scheduled right now after this episode is the Jersey Devil, so we'll have to uh, bat and start getting some guests scheduled again. Not that I don't like talking to you, man. but I understand. I get bored of you, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so that's, in a nutshell, what we've been we've done so far. Uh Night Soccer's Radio, which we've just recently started bringing up the name because it's a little crude and a little embarrassing from the early days. A little? Okay, a lot crude and embarrassing from the early days. Um, as well as uh, the the sound quality from our our first show, at least on Blog Talk Radio, was rather rough. Mm-hmm. Uh and it would be not appropriate to share the episodes from the other station we were on because it would just, I don't know, be bad memories. <laughs> <laughs> As is the one clip that I sent you, which you did you get at all? Did I still get didn't it? get. So go ahead and try and resend it. I'll try and get it up there. Check to see what it did here. 
If not, you can. There's a problem sending your message. You can log into the Paratruth one now and upload it yourself if you want. Sure, I could do that. Um, so while Eric is doing that, uh, I think we'll take our first break here. Uh, you guys are listening to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio, and we will be back in just a few minutes. Confessions of a Potentially Perfect Parent, brought to you by AdoptUsKids.org. I might look like an adult, like a person who could possibly be a parent, but I have no idea how to talk like one. And everyone knows that if you want to be a parent, you have to sound good when you say things like, Don't make me turn this car around, or Because I said so, or Don't make me come back there. I don't even really know what those things mean. But I know that I actually believed my parents when they said them to me. How did they manage to sound so convincing? Here we go. Don't make me come back there. Oh, no, that's not tough enough at all. Kids can sense weakness. Don't make me come back there. Ooh, yeah, that's better. In fact, that kind of sounded like my dad. Weird. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to listen to you practice your dad voice. Call 1-888-200-4005 or visit adoptuskids.org for more information. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt Us Kids, and the Ad Council. Okay, forest animals, today is a new day. Kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow. Yes? Have you practiced the most popular bird songs for the year? Of course. Catchy. I like it. Okay, river. Dude. How's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. Perfect for a little riverside shoeless relaxation. Ah, good. Owl, you hear? Cool. Who, who's asking? I am. Look, you know the drill. Sleep during the day, scare the kids at night. Perfect. I love my job. Uh, oak tree? What's up? Still in the same place I left you last year. That's what I like. Consistency. Well, it's not like I'm going anywhere for the next couple hundred years. I know. I love it. Uh, turtle. Turtle. He's not here yet, man. Ugh, he's late every morning. You'd think you would have learned by now to leave the night before our meetings. Okay. Squirrel. Has anybody seen Mr. Squirrel? The forest has been preparing just for you. Visit a forest near you today. To learn more about cool things to do in the forest, visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Hello, everybody. Sublimely Elegant here, as always. And guess what? I know you. Well, no, we've never met, but I do know you. I know you love Minecraft. I know you love the internet. Now, I also happen to know you love colorful language. So, instead of moping around all day, why don't you head on over to my channel and satiate your deepest needs. YouTube.com forward slash Sublimely Elegant. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one... In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... Is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. This is Bill Hall, author of the book, The World's Most Haunted House, and you're listening to Paratruth Radio. All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. My name's Justin. And I'm Eric. And uh, we are coming at you live together in the same show, or same room. Yes, usually it is. The same yeah. show. <laughs> I hope it's the same show, because otherwise <laughs> we're screwed. Uh, and uh, this is our New Year's episode here uh, we were doing some fiddling around here, so bear with us as Eric sending me a file to share with from his Forgotten Truth radio show that he had back in the day. I must have deleted all of my Parasite radio. Like I'm like, uh, this is the path. Let's get rid of it. <laughs> it's like throwing away a piece of your life that you just want to forget about. 
I understand. Um, Pretty much all the only shows that I have are from when I was on Pair X. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Even our old uh, Pair X shows, I don't. I think I deleted them all. One thing we could do, maybe a little. I could do it since you're on there. I could just look up all the uh, the old Night Soccer shows that may or may not be a blog talk still. <laughs> and <it> you could, <laughs> <laughs> um, as we uh, fiddle our way th- through here. Actually, you know what? Let's see if I can change this to a two-hour episode because this might be. Uh, yeah, we're gonna switch this to a two-hour episode because <laughs> this might take a while. This could take a while, folks. Um, <laughs> All right. So, for those of you that uh, are either new to the show or newer to the show, me and Eric had two separate shows way back when. Uh, one was paired, uh, actually three shows: Night Stalkers Radio that was right here on Blog Talk Radio, as well as on uh, Para X Radio. Uh, I left the Night Stalker show, and Eric killed. Night Stalkers for Forgotten it was Truth epic. Radio. It was completely epic, and unfortunately, I don't have. I was gonna say, do you have that clip or episode. no? No, I don't have that I, clip. It was awesome because we had sirens going off that I made with my own voice. <laughs> 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 we had the background saying, "Night Stalkers Radio is dead." I repeat, Night Stalker Radio is no longer. And we continued on, and it was epic because it was me doing it myself, and no one was probably listening at the time. <laughs> and I'm weird, but you know what? It's okay. I had fun. <laughs> yeah, so um that that was uh Night Stalkers Radio, then came for uh Forgotten Truth Radio and mm-hmm. Parrot uh Sight Radio, uh which I did on a, another network uh which was called Fate Radio and then switched to Shark Radio. Um and Eric stayed on Para X and then eventually uh, Eric left Para X Radio. I was doing my show by myself for a short time, hence where Eric's random fact of the day came from. Yeah. <laughs> so that he could still be in the radio game, even though he wasn't doing a show with me. Uh, and then I eventually discontinued that show as well. Um, the sounds are coming from me, which I'm going to get out of. Okay. I was going to say, where is, where is this coming from? I swear I just turned this down. Um, so, uh, after meeting Shelly, my girlfriend, she thought it would be awesome for us to do our show again. Did you send that file? Yes, I did. I still don't got it. Did you spell my name right? <laughs> I had you look at it. Hold on. Um, and so, we decided to do Para Truth, not Para only Truth. as in the the merging of Parasite Radio and uh, Forgotten Truth Radio, but also Paranormal Truth. So uh, there was two sides to that sword for, for that one. So uh, didn't send it. I, no, I saw it. My mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Did you send it to yourself? I forgot to put a second C in there. Oh my it's god, man. Kettle, Grandpa is kettle, rolling in his grave. Shut up. He's like, Eric, bad. <laughs> Honest mistake. Before you know it, <laughs> we're going to have some paranormal activity going on here. He's going to crack you over the head. <laughs> 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 and for those of you listening, our grandfather was awesome and always supported us, but... Uh, as we said last episode, if we ever got into any shenanigans at all while we were there for the holidays, it was rather brutal if we didn't stop. The belt would come out and all that good stuff. So, uh, let's see here. Um, just to go into a little bit into stuff we haven't gone into, what types of episodes would you want to see us do, Eric? <sighs> um, or topics. I or say. topics. I kind of figured I should do that. I wasn't exactly sure, but actually I was sure. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying I'm saying I wasn't sure because I'm sitting here typing for <laughs> fans while speaking, which is anyone knows to listen to any of our shows in the past six years, seven years, eight years. <laughs> I don't even know how long it's been. I often get screwed up. Anyway, 
what's there's, there's you know I, I often think about it and I hear about things while watching TV or reading a few books or uh, just different things that pop up online and think to myself you know what that's a really good topic we should cover it and I decided not to write it down because I think I have a good memory <laughs> which we all know I don't right so of course here we are today and I'm stumped because I can't remember the stuff <laughs> that I would want to cover um, but you know I think one of the big ones which would be fun is and I said, I think I don't remember if you and I have done um, uh, done one together. It was like different portals and stuff like that. And, and uh, I don't remember if we did that one together or not. And that could be like you know the Bermuda Triangle and the Devil's Triangle. Yeah. You know, depending on what you see. And of course, if we covered those uh, particular things. We wouldn't just look at them as portals. We would look at them as possible alien abductions and right, uh, magnetic, yeah. uh, you know, frequencies that might mess things yeah, up. Yeah, disturbance, uh, and, yeah. You know, EMF. Like that. Um, but it might be one that's kind of fun. Uh, I know my friend Alex was just telling me at breakfast this morning. Uh, there's a few places around the co- around the world, but there's a couple here in the country, uh, some kind of portal where you can go, and some people have gone. And it's very common, I guess, when you go there. You experience really weird things. You're guaranteed to experience something, and some of those people become possessed. Oh. And uh, I, I got to ask him again where it's at or what it's called, because that's something we can probably look up and check out. Because I would prefer to go there. I know a lot of people. Why would you go somewhere? You could be possessed. Yeah. But um, in Justin, so <laughs> that's why <laughs> we're not we're not the brightest tool to no. when it comes to this stuff. But. It would definitely be an experience to not necessarily be possessed, yeah. but have other things happen. Um, one, um, not an episode to do, but one place I would really like to see, I forget the exact name for it, but it's some somebody's hole, and it's this huge, almost like crater-type thing in this dude's farm that goes down nobody knows how far, People throw things in there. You can't hear it hit nothing. Really? Yeah. So it's definitely one I would like to check out. You know, there was one that I know we we did cover a little bit in the past. Um, I can't remember his name. It was uh, one of the guys that you knew, I guess, pretty well. Um, Bishop. I think it's Bishop or or maybe it's Bishop. Bishop Long. Bishop Long. Long. Bishop Long, who had the uh, the sound clip uh, from when people were digging and they heard all the screams and stuff in the ground. Do you remember that? And they called it the clip from hell. Where they dig, dug so deep into the ground where they claimed oh, to hear the yeah. sounds of hell. And I know that's something that's I believe has been debunked um, because I think it's been it was something that was kind of just chopped up in some kind of software oh. to make it seem like it was real, but it wasn't. And just how clear that is, I don't know. Like, I don't know if they are officially claiming it's been debunked or what. Oh. But uh, I know that's something that he's done, something we've covered, because I know we've had it on the show before, too. We played that clip a long time ago. <laughs> but that'd be something that's interesting. I'm trying to think of any guests I would like to have on that are a little more well-known. Um but I can't think of anybody. I'm trying to even think of old shows from Night Stalkers that we haven't done. Oh, we could do the the haunted sex toy. Oh God! <laughs> no, no, let's not go there. <laughs> That'd be a clip to play. That would be a clip to play. And I'm still not getting your little clip there. What the heck, man? I don't know. You're the one sending it. I know, and it said it's set. <laughs> and I spelled everything correctly this time. No, there's, for some reason, it's just uh, there's a problem with my provider. Uh, you know what? We're going to play this clip from me, and we're just going to put it through my microphone. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'll look for that for the exact place I want to start playing it on our next break, because it would be really annoying if I'm looking for it through the clip now while on air. Um, um. You know, someone else we can have on, and you and I have talked about it in the past, and we decided not to, and that's our good friend, uh, Eric. Oh, I'm not going to yeah. say the last name, because I don't know if we want to go there, but <laughs> that's an interesting, interesting guest. Yeah. Um, talk about ups and 
out. Yeah. Literally. Um, and then kind of interchanging <laughs> the two. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> um, hmm. If we did, we'd have to keep a little more open mind, especially from your perspective of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'd be really hard for me as well, just because I, I know him. And the two different episodes that we did with him, one on the one spectrum and one on the yeah. complete opposite. Um, all right. Um, I think we'll take another quick break. Um, do you want to do your random fact of the day? Do I want to do my random fact of the day? Do you do have what? one to do? I do not right now, but I can have one <laughs> next by the end of this break. Okay. So next break, we'll do Eric's random fact. Uh, but we will play Eric's music that I like to play quite often. <laughs> I'll get a new one up soon, guys. I promise. I'm getting tired of it, too. <laughs> so we'll be back in just a few minutes. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch-snuggling, ball-chasing, face-licking, tail-wagging, backyard-hanging, and, of course, companionship. And what breed would you say Satchmo is? I'd have to go with maybe a lavish terrier hound chihuahua-looking kind of mix. Tremendous dog. Mm, I'd also like to point out Satchmo's coloring, a white, gray, brown, black brindle, simply marvelous. You know, it's such a treat to watch a dog like this. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive. And now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance, so common with this group. And finally, the loving face lick. It's great how he just gets in there and, well, licks. Fantastic. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council.
When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. When I grow up, I want to be a glass countertop in a new home. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's best birthday present. When I grow up, I want to be a football stadium. When I grow up, I want to be a warm place on a cold day. When I grow up, I want to be a fancy when back I grow up, I want to be a bike that races around the when country. When I grow up, I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow trail. up, I want to be a rocking chair on when a I sunny up, porch. I want to be a skyscraper. I want to be a... 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 When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. A public service advertisement brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. I'm in almost every school bus and classroom. I go to school with your children. We say the Pledge of Allegiance together. You see me around the neighborhood, and you've told me I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every four children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. This problem is closer than you think. My teacher tells me we could grow up and be whatever we want. I want to grow up and be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. There's enough food in this country to feed everyone. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide seven meals for kids like me, quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Ladies and gentlemen, sublimely elegant here as always, and you are listening to Fair and Truth Radio. All right, folks, welcome back to Fair and Truth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. I'm Justin. And I'm Eric. And uh, we are broadcasting live in the same room at the same time for the first time in almost four years, five years, almost, years. almost five years. Um, so we've been talking a little bit about what we want to do coming up here in the next couple episodes. Uh, one that we're going to be doing is the, the Jersey Devil, with, which was uh, requested by Eric friend um that was alex um, or was it somebody no, it was no, somebody from school Lewis, yeah my friend Lewis. um so that's one that we i don't think have ever done yeah no i don't think so um if you guys have any requests uh you're more than welcome to hop in our chat room uh give us a little holler there with any shows you might want to hear, you can also call us on our call in line, 914-205-5558. Wait, was that way too many fives? <laughs> 205-5558. Yeah. Um, or you can hit us up on Facebook or Twitter or even our email, which is paratruthradio at gmail.com. Um, so we are. Oh, uh, board! <laughs> And if you want to get on the chupacabra chain, then you, you can hop on right now because apparently it just pulled into the station. Um, <laughs> and Eric, no refunds on tickets. <laughs> Eric's in control of the <laughs> studio at the moment. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, if you guys have any requests, go ahead. Definitely get. A shout out to us. Uh, we are working on a clip here to pl- pr- blah, blah, play for you from uh, show Forgotten Truth Radio. Uh, it's about uh, what is it about? All right. Well, this was uh, th- this clip we're going to show. I don't know how long it is. It's not that long. It won't uh, be too long. I- I'll have to tell Justin when I cut it off. But uh, it was my very last episode of Forgotten Truth Radio. I had done that particular show for 27 weeks uh, and it just came to the point where well it's a long story I'm not going to say it, <laughs> but basically I, I decided to quit the show and I decided to have it was the first time I actually had anyone in studio with me that was a guest so it ended up being my sister who was part of a belly dancing uh, team way back then and 
And I basically just simply asked her if she has had any paranormal experiences. And it, I'm kind of I want to play this just because fun episode. And two, I've talked about Ouija boards in the past, even on this show, when we have about yeah. uh, our own personal experiences. And this just kind of helps strengthen what I was saying uh, when I talked about some of my experiences. Because my sister, both of my sisters, were there as well uh, when we used to use the Ouija board. And I'll, I've said it back then, four years ago, and I'll say it again now. The Ouija board is a very, very instrument to contact the dead. It's not a game. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that I think, especially children these days, aren't aware of. So, uh, just because something says it's a game, folks, doesn't mean it is. And made by Parker Brothers, a mm-hmm. game company at that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I am in 100% agreement with Eric on this. That, that is going to open doors that you do not want opened. Uh, she has willingly decided... No, that's not it yet. Um, actually... Um, so yeah, the uh, the Ouija board actually was one that I was thinking about. We should do kind of a whole show on because it's one of those ones that has a huge story behind it, mm-hmm. as well as uh, a lot of things and tips to either not do it first off, or if you've done it, you know things you can do to try and get that stuff out of your house, yeah. such as first off, don't do it. But secondly, get a priest. <laughs> <laughs> if you're having issues, um, it, it, and that's, that's something that, that's a whole other topic too. Yeah. In regards to, you know, a priest casting out demons or, right. You know, it's just the most common one. So that's it's the most, it at. is the most common one. Um, all right, let's see here. So um, if you guys have any suggestions, like I said, let us know. Uh, we are definitely going to uh, have a couple new and different topics on coming up shortly. I've got a list of probably about a whole page long of different guests that I want to get on for us. Uh, and, of course, always getting Eric's yes or no because this show would not be – what it is without two perspectives. So um, let's see here. uh, Thanks for a good show. Why don't you just play along here with your, play with yourself while I'm trying to, (laughs) while you're trying to figure that out. (laughs) What time is that? This is just, um, they're not hearing this, of course, but this is, uh, I just cut it just a little bit before the six and a half mark. Oh, I see. And uh, cool. it's the explanation. Uh, <clears throat> do you know how long her story was? Not a clue. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to listen to it all because dinner was done, and I was like, well, I got a show in an hour, so I better eat real quick. <laughs> and then you came over, so. So, folks, sometimes I don't see Justin often, and when I do... This usually happens to me. Don't you dare touch me! Stand back! <laughs> no! No! And that's why he's in North Dakota now. Okay, uh, so here we go. <laughs> All right, so that's where I'm going to clip. All Yeah, so the paranormal, folks. We have... It's weird because we've discussed so many topics in the past, over the past six years or so. Really? Uh, so and even today, it's kind of like. I'm sorry, I had to take the headphones off because I can't. Wait, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I didn't hear what you said either. Yeah. <laughs> I had to take the headphones off because Justin's over here messing with my clip and he's trying to get it just right. So I'm hearing me speak off of a clip from like four <laughs> years ago while I'm trying to talk. It must be up. Um, <laughs> so we've, as we were just saying, we we've covered so many topics in the past over the past. How long has it been now? Six years again, you said? Or uh, well, it was five thousand or nine. five thousand nine. <laughs> Holy crap! Nine. We went to the future to start our yeah, this, our show. This is the best paranormal radio show ever. <laughs> <laughs> we know 
everything. <laughs> yeah. We know what's going to happen, so we just kind of pretend that we don't know, so you guys think it's... That's why sometimes we get we stutter and we try to put things together, because half of it's crap. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> um... Did you even remember what you were going to say? Yeah, here? I'm just counting. So, yeah, it's been a, close to six years now, about five years, I think. Yeah, well, years. it'll be... It, it's five years now. It's going on six years, because we are at the end of the year. Yeah, which it's is kind of, hard to believe. Yeah. My gosh, it's years flown by yeah. um you know i think i think it's a good thing to bring up our new little segment that's going to be starting up here shortly too. oh yeah um so as you all know i have my own little segment eric's random fact of the day and some of you I'm, i hope some of you if not all of you like it <laughs> i like it cause i love it especially not only just the fact but the little la- go for a laugh yeah, at the you end. Know, i mean it's absolutely <laughs> funny i talk i'm adorable so I I know you all like that. <laughs> but we have You are adorable. Oh thank you. Thank you. Oh thank you. I appreciate that. You take your hand off me now. Um Yeah. Don't you dare touch me! Stand back! No! No All right. Just he warned you guys, he warned you that it was gonna be like this. <laughs> It's just goofiness. Just enjoy it. Relax. <laughs> deal with it. Um, anyway, so Eric's random fact of the day. It's something that we play pretty much. Occasionally we skip it. Well, um, I mean, we are human. We do get busy. Eric has a huge case or uh, school load, so I don't always expect him to be on top of the random fact, but I do remind him quite often. Yeah, yeah I am reminded quite often. And sometimes it's not until the very last minute, literally about 10 I minutes need to the be show, better. that I sent it. Um, so I could probably do a little better with that. But we have another segment starting up as well. So you'll still get Eric's random fact of the day or the week or whatever it is. Um, every single week, Paratruth Radio's I believe it's what we call it, right? Yeah. Uh, and this is a little segment that Justin's going to take over and Yay. put together the intro and outro. And I think we'll probably discuss it a little bit uh, as well, how he wants it all set up Yeah. Uh, so I can start mixing things together. But um, it basically, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, he's going to look through the newscasting and the papers and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, as bad as it sounds. A good place to go for that is the National Enquirer. So, <laughs> oh, no. oh. Uh, but I will be doing research. I will obviously say where I got it from, mm-hmm. just because that is a legal thing. Yeah. Um, and um, just have a little fun with it. It's kind of something I've thought about for a while. Um. I've heard it on another show, something similar, not paranormal headlines, but uh, I think it was called Paranormal News. Um, But something to just kind of bring insight into the paranormal community, because there are people that are either on a one side of the spectrum or the other for paranormal world, or you've never heard of anything paranormal before which would be really weird um and uh just something to fill our breaks with as well i i know you guys are getting tired of the public service announcements i don't like playing them all the time but unfortunately uh oh where's the clip damn you There it is. It's at the bottom. Of course it is. Okay. Um, so, yeah, something new and exciting to, to look forward to. And, again, that's something else money will be going towards. Uh, we are trying to improve everything for you guys, and that's that's something else that those funds will be used for. Uh, so, again, the Indiegogo, which I hate to keep pushing it, but we are, as we Eric need to, said, cause we're, it's we're, broke. Out. It, we're broke. I mean, let's um, face it, I, I'm not working. Throughout most of the year, honestly, yeah. I, I, this is uh, since August. I'm working right now since I'm uh, back in Cleveland for the next, well, it's almost over, but for a month. And uh, it, I'm making, you know, I'm working every single day, well, five days a week. And that is the most I've worked since August because I haven't worked a single day since August. Yeah. Uh, and I will be back in Virginia for the next four months. 
up until June and or at the end of May, and who knows if I'm going to be doing anything else after doing anything that. Else or where I'll be going? I know I plan on doing some internship or something like that, and whether or not it's paid is beyond me. Yeah. Uh, so I may not be making much money at all until mid July or August, and if at all, period. Who knows? So yeah, need, keep pouring it on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going. I'm just going. You know what? <clears throat> I can't eat. I don't, I don't have food. He's a skeleton. You should see him. I don't, I don't have any money to buy food. <laughs> I, I cry every night. I, I mean, he looks like Dean Winchester for Pete's sake. <laughs> <laughs> No, so, uh, but seriously, I mean, we could use the, the extra cash to uh, make the show as great as possible, and it is we, we guarantee and promise that all funding we get will go towards the show. Um, I was kidding about the food thing. I eat more than probably most people do. <laughs> I've got enough money for that. So, um, but I am running out. <laughs> That's true. I'm trying to take in as much as I can now because eventually, <laughs> going back I'm, to school, it's like bare bones. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> So that's the typical uh, college student. So, um, so yeah, definitely check out the Indiegogo account uh, uh, campaign, and um, we've got it posted in our chat room here. If you're listening live, definitely scroll down to the bottom of your screen there and uh, check that out. Uh, if you're listening to the archive, you will I will have that in the comments of the archive for you guys to check out as well. Um, so, I'm sorry. Did you explain? You explained a little bit about the uh, the clip we're about to play, correct? Uh, I did explain a little bit about it. I'll do it again real quick. Uh, my sister, in, in the past, we've talked about our, our paranormal experiences. Mm. One of the ones that I've covered was an experience that I had with a Ouija board and lights flickering and the uh, what do you call that? The dial, whatever that you use. Yeah, it, I'm that, not sure what it's called, but yeah, yeah the little um, uh, and then you eye. On. Yeah. Um, that thing heated up once when I was using it, like hot enough where we, uh, my sisters and I had to pull our hands away uh, just because it was getting too hot. And uh, it, it was a very interesting and creepy experience. And I know, like I said, I touched base a little bit on that in the past. This clip here is an episode that I did of Forgotten Truth Radio. It's the very last episode, the finale episode, uh, about two, three years ago or so. And my sister joined me for it. And she, when I asking her if she's had any paranormal experiences, this Ouija board one is the one that comes to mind. So she's going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and share that right now, actually. All okay. right. And uh, and make uh, sure a good show. Sure a good show. So, so, folks, without further ado, I present to you my sister, Ellie Scareback. Ellie, how are you doing today? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, where's my questions? I need my questions. Folks, you guys know I can't ask questions unless I actually have questions to ask, and I don't remember them. Uh, <clears throat> so I guess the first thing I have to ask uh, is a basic question. This is indeed a paranormal network uh, and a paranormal radio show. So, first question, are you or have you ever been involved or interested in the paranormal field? I actually have been. Obviously, you're my brother, so... Uh I, I deal with all the things that you have, and we've done some interesting things um, in the past where we've dealt with, like, the lights flashing and some areas getting hot, and I know we've we've recorded areas of the house and actually heard people respond to your questions in those, and um, actually most of the girls in our Monster Dolls is really into all that stuff, and... Um, I know my friend Alana is really, she has so much experience with that, and she's really interested in these things. Yeah, and uh, you, you uh, well, another thing we did when we were younger, you, you mentioned the flashing lights and the heat spots and stuff like that. Uh, something that's very important to know is that this all happened when we were playing with the Ouija board. Yes, it was crazy. We were all in your room. And uh, we were all surrounded, and we're like, oh, yeah, let's try this out. And uh, all of a sudden, the lights started flashing and all this stuff, and it was crazy. We kind of, we were younger then, so we were freaking out and running out, but it was great. It was cool. Yes, lights flashing, things getting hot. Folks, regular human spirits can't do that. I'm going to tell you again, as, you know, we have these many debates over and over and over again, the Ouija board is not a good thing to play with. Folks, let me tell you. 
I don't care what anyone says. You can say all you want. Uh, that you can people who say they can control the spirits that come in and out of Ouija boards. Uh, you know, again, I feel that all spirits are demons because Scripture says that to be apart from the body is to be in the presence of God, which means when we die, we go to Him and He sends us to hell or lets us stay in heaven, according to our belief. And uh, with that said, again, I think demons really control the thing. And uh, no matter what happens, people, we're human. So anyone who says they can control or know what's coming in and out of a Ouija board, it's impossible. We have no control over the spiritual realm whatsoever. We're, 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 too, we're physical. We, we can't do anything unless we're Christ himself, and, well, we're not by any means. So Ouija boards, bad idea, but hey. Ellie, do you still play with Ouija boards? I do not. I've learned my lesson. Learned, learned her lesson. When we were kids, we went through all that, and it got so bad that my mom threw it away. So, no more Ouija boards. Haven't touched one since. Uh, I still get the urge, though, I'll be honest, to want to play with one, but mm -mm, ain't happening. Ain't happening. Oh, that was, that was Eric telling his view again, as well as apparently admitting that he would play with the Ouija board again. I, I would. You know, I'm like, I'm, I, it was fun back then, but you know what? I know what comes of it. So, you know. <laughs> I'm just being open and honest. Doesn't mean I'm going to go and use it. But, you know, one of the things that's interesting there when I was talking, I was saying, <clears throat> you know, we as humans aren't capable of controlling the spiritual side of things. You know, we can't control demons. We can't control human spirits if you believe they walk the earth. Um, and I know many people out there would argue that with me. People will say, well, look at Elisha Crowley. You know, look at Solomon. Look at the history of Solomon or King Solomon. And you know what? Yeah, they, they, there's history that they have been able to counter up and control demons using um, different symbols and uh, magical spells. I was going to say black magic, yeah, which you know, is not good either. Well, no, you know, it tells men, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, you, you can use that argument all you want, but I'll still come back with the – it's very simple. Demons have been around for thousands of years. They are very capable of manipulating the situation to make you think you have control only in the, for in the end for them to turn around and use it against you, you know. Uh, they want to drive you as far away from God as possible, and if that means letting you think you're in control, then it will be. Uh, but I guarantee, and I know there's many people who have experienced it, who've tried to, you know, demand a demon to do something else or conjure one up and control it, and it backfires horribly, you know. So I guess it depends on what the demon's looking for to get out of you at a particular time. Yeah, I see this is one of the very few, few subjects Eric and I see eye to eye on is uh, Ouija boards bad, demons even worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't play with something you can't control, and uh, there are always going to be things that the demon can get around. It doesn't matter how how many wards you claim to have. Uh, doesn't matter how many symbols you use. It doesn't matter how many things you put in place that you, you supposedly think are uh, going to control it. Uh, demons are not something to mess with. Hence why a Ouija board is not good because it opens a doorway for those things to come into our world. Yep. Even though they can get here on their own sometimes, but uh, very rarely can they uh, as much damage as they do when they can come through a an open door. So I think we will go to our next break here before, uh, cause Eric is playing with himself on his webcam. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey. be careful how you say that. <laughs> <laughs> playing on his webcam. Um, and, uh, we're going to do Eric's random fact day and a real quick break. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Now, Eric's random facts of the day. As all should know, it is common sense that if we were to drink salt water from the ocean, What's up? 
thinking about you. XOXOXO. One, two, snuggle. Dot, dot, dot. JK. Hit me back. You getting these texts? Question mark. We should hang later. I miss you. Holla at your boy. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. Are you at home? Where are you? What are you doing? OMG. You are making me mad. Are you with your ex? You better text me back. I'm waiting outside your house. Relentless, aggressive texting is like sending an angry robot to deliver your message. When does the robot become dangerous? Let us know at that's not cool dot com. That's not cool dot com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Are you ready? Are you prepared? What if some cataclysmic event shook your every foundation? Would you and your family know what to do? My name is Jacqueline Druga, host of the Apocalypse Dennis Show. Join me every Thursday evening, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Prepper Broadcasting Network. Prepperbroadcasting.com, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We're there for your survival needs. back to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And you are listening to our New Year's episode as Eric is screwing around <laughs> with his webcam software. Oh, and apparently he has angels flying around his head, so that's a good thing. And is on fire, and now he's a demon. What the hell? That's all kinds of things. <laughs> so if you're listening live... Uh, we have a chat room at the bottom of the screen if you want to join us in our chat room, uh, or you can call 914-205-5558, and uh, we would love to get your perspective on things. Uh, if you have any suggestions on upcoming shows that you would like to hear, uh, as well as any guests you would like to hear. Um, and as I've said for the past several times now, we have our Indiegogo campaign up if you want to check that out it's in our chat room or it is in the comments of the podcast as well as check out us out on facebook and <laughs> on twitter i'm sorry <laughs> i like the king of the radio right now <laughs> i think you want to know what i'm talking about i'm about to show you <laughs> eric will post this up on uh on facebook facebook for you guys um Oh, so going through past episodes of Night Stalkers and Forgotten Truth, even Parasite Radio, because I do remember episodes of that, were there any that got interesting or maybe as interesting as Mr. Eric other than that one? Did did we have any for Night Stalkers that were memorable? Um, <clears throat> to your in your mind, I mean, <clears throat> in my mind, there, there's a there were a couple actually, and uh, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and just name say the names <laughs> because <laughs> you I, look really annoyed by that. Well, I'm not annoyed. I'm just you know, because like so often we're we're questioning whether or not you know other certain names right. stay and not stay, yeah. uh, mostly based on you know what's right and wrong. Do do these people want to be ex, you know right. exposed or whatever uh, on the radio? And of course, they've been on the radio, and they they stand in that not always necessarily a spotlight, but they're in the yeah. community. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say it, and we mentioned that earlier, and it would be episode six of Night nice Stalkers, uh, which is very interesting because it was uh, our friend, or at least our acquaintance now, Eric Fraze, uh, who was the, or I guess the pro- self-claimed, um, what was it, the 
King Witch or what what do you call himself? Do you remember? Um, I don't know. Um I'm gonna look it up right now on right. our Um Basically he well, he was a witch, but he was also a Satanist. Um he called himself a witch. He was a priest of Satan. A priest actually. of Satan. Uh and he had this he went by a particular name that he gave himself and just going to look that up right now. But it was very interesting because again, we we didn't even mean to do it, but it ended up being episode six. Uh, yeah. which was interesting considering it was, you know, this Satan, piece of yeah. Satan and all that. And it was by far one of the most interesting and bizarre episodes we ever had. Oh, God, Simply yeah. because he went out of his way to try and tell us why, you know, Satan is the right being to follow, right. basically. Why we should make Satan our God. Um, Not only that, some of the things he said, such as uh, – Witch King of Salem is what he calls himself. Witch King himself. of Salem calls himself. Okay. Um, being turned on when uh, baptizing people into Satanism, and it was just really odd. Yeah. Uh, even for somebody who's in, in Satanism, and me and Eric were like, "Wow." <laughs> I mean, and we eventually did have him on again on uh, through Para X. Um, of an experience where he finally was possessed uh, and switched back to Christianity. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, one of the things that was so interesting, though, was not just it's some of the stuff he discussed with us, but it, it was he went into description, I guess, as how he baptizes people into mm-hmm. Satanism. And then he even went so far as to tell us why the Bible God, or, or at least why God isn't who we, uh, the Bible claims he is. Because one of the things he said was, if you look at the word Bible, the word lie is seen in there. Which, of course, you have to do all this rearranging of words right, and so yeah. to get it. So it's just some random crap that he has to come up with. Some people, you know, Satanists have to come up with. Uh, so it works toward, for them. But I also noticed, and not just uh, with what he said in regards to Satanism, but I, I've noticed other Satanists say similar things. Um they tend to contradict themselves a lot. They'll say one thing and then say something completely different, and it just doesn't flow at all. Um, but that was definitely one of the weirdest and probably more, one of the more frightening, considering <laughs> yeah. it, was our, it was our early debut in the Paranormal. <laughs> yeah. Six episodes into Parachute Radio, and we didn't – or, I mean, uh, Nice Talkers Radio. And we didn't really have much under our belt in regards to the paranormal community. So we weren't even doing uh, investigations yet at that time. Yeah. So it was definitely frightening for us, and we're like, okay, uh, yeah. So we hung <laughs> up and we just looked at each other and continued talking on the radio, like, yeah, I think we're just going to stick with God. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, of course, now we know more about it, and we still say, yeah, we're going to stick with God because we are. Yeah. Um, at that point, I mean, we also, too, were – I don't think we had done the – the uh, cleansing and everything yet because that was still on blog talk radio and we were thinking about getting the who the hooju bags or juju bags or whatever the heck they were called and all that stuff to protect ourselves i i'm on the same page as eric for this as well using magic to protect yourself is as bad as much as trying to control a demon um I, I'm looking through some of our episodes here. Uh, Patrick Doyle from Haunted Hoax. Do you remember him? I, I do, actually, yeah. Uh, he was definitely an interesting one. This is a guy who has a YouTube channel, uh, or did back then. I don't know if he still does. We'll have to look and see if he's still going. Um, but he, w- he would debunk the so-called haunted places. Um, one of them that he had talked about, which was hilarious to me was the supposed site of a witch that was hung. Um, and what the site really was, was an old urinal. It was an old bathroom that had just decayed over time. Uh, he was definitely a really good one. Um, do you remember going to Gore Orphanage? Of course I do. <laughs> you know, and it's not just the episode. That episode is pretty fun. Yeah. Um, did we have, did we have your sister on for that episode too? I don't remember. I don't. No, we didn't have her on. Right. Uh, she did on. go with she us for the investigation. Um, that was a fun investigation. Of course, we didn't really come up with much, but uh, just the experience of being there. And yeah. I think that was one of our one of our very first investigations, wasn't it? 
other than the cemeteries um, right. and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah. That was one of the ones where we were starting to escalate because um, we took her and my girlfriend at the time to go on the investigation. Mm-hmm. These different times. I mean, they, yeah. those are the days where uh, Justin and I were so, I guess. We were so in love with each other. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh man! Knock <laughs> <Not> down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, but we're so like in, infatuated, infatuated, infatuated. That's what I'm looking for. We were so like in tune and wanted to use get into the occult in certain aspects that we would use salt, for example. Yeah. And one of the things that we did every time we got out of the car for an investigation is we would put a circle of salt around the car so that when we got back into the car, spirits couldn't, you know, get in the car with us. And, of course, there's a bunch of history and belief behind uh, that. And it's the idea that salt is a pure substance, and therefore spirits, when they walk across it, get trapped within salt itself and are unable to walk past it. And, of course, as we all know these days, at least on our side, and I don't know, Maybe you, you think differently, but it's a load of crap. <laughs> um, but it was something that you know I believed in at the time, and something that I did. And we did that with every investigation too. I think pretty much, right up until uh, for a while. For a while, up until I think we we went to uh, Ghost Alley and uh, a resident's house right. uh, to work with yeah. their little child and the experiences they were having, uh, which was out in Akron area. Yeah. Uh, and that's when it kind of stopped and things started getting serious. Things got things got real real quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so we did that. Yeah. <laughs> Not the boob. Not the boob. Um, so that, that was a good one. There was what was another one that we did. Uh, I, I had a, I had it in mind right before I started talking about. See what you did to me? Uh, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> there was an episode we did, and I don't remember if it was nice. I think it was nice soccer. It was nice soccer. Um, but I can't remember if we were on Blog Talk or Parachute at the or uh, Para X, Parachute, yeah. Para X at the at the time. And I don't remember the uh, the guest's name, but she was able to speak with animals. Oh, it's I have it right here. Uh-huh. It was on Blog Talk Radio. Okay. Uh, actually, what it, it happened was. This episode on Blog Talk Radio got screwed up, and we were losing audio, and she couldn't hear us. Mm. Uh, and so we did do it again on Para X. Okay. Uh, Karen Anderson. Karen Anderson. Okay. So that's one that I really remember uh, quite well. And she claimed to have been able to talk to animals. Whether or not she legitimately could, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I know there have been people who claim that she could. Um. And of course, you know me. It goes much further than that. Whether right. or not she was actually the one speaking to the animals, or something else telling her what these animals, you know, were thinking or talking about, or whatever. But it was still something that just stuck in my mind. It was one of the first episodes we actually did at your apartment, mm-hmm. um, Karen Broadview Heights. Uh, and I remember asking her about my dog Angus at the time, and she said that he was, you know, in pain and had something wrong with, I think it was his kidney or something like that. I can't remember yeah, that. Yeah, I can't remember, but she was saying that, you know, my dog told her he was in pain. But, which is very, this is very interesting because it did kind of, at the time, you know, since I wasn't saying, have my experiences that I had, I did believe this quite quite much, uh, that she did speak to animals. But one of the things that she said when I mentioned his name was that he is, tells her that he's always treated like a king, you know, that he's waited on hand and foot, you know, which is true. Because yeah. that dog of ours was treated like a king, and we gave him everything. Um, so that was kind of interesting to me. Uh, looking back on it now, whether or not I believe that there was any truth to what she was capable of doing, I don't know. It could have just been mere coincidence or something much darker. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it was an experience that I had, um, and that I remember quite well. The the one that sticks out in my mind. Uh, as well right now uh going through this list was uh 
Pastor Swolk, the paranormal pastor. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he was one that w- it was very interesting because he was talking about thing different. Uh, I don't know what you call trips to to countries that you're trying to um, convert them to Christianity. Uh, uh, mission trips. Yeah, missions. Um, he was on a mission and um, came across this creature that was in this lake that the uh the tribe that he was with at the time were were showing him it never came up out of the water but it was something he could tell was not natural to this world or uh natural at least to that particular environment because it was it had it was almost like a hippo type creature i think he said where the hump came out of the water, or no, not not, I'm sorry, not a hippo. Um, it was a type of whale that he had said, and it came up out of the water. But this was like a lake; it was an enclosed water source. It wasn't attached a river. It wasn't yeah, it wasn't attached to the ocean or anything. Um, so he was definitely another one that was really good, and actually one I might try and find again. Him, uh, Patrick Stewart, or Patrick Stewart whatever his last name was. Um Eric we'll we'll talk about that one for Eric phrase. And um there were a couple others that we had when we were on Pair X. Of course I don't have those episodes or I might if I can um were I know you didn't have a whole lot of guests um forgotten truth, but were there any there that <clears throat> stick out to you? Um, there are two that stick, well, three that stick out very well. Uh, the one is Jesse Marcel Jr. Which I also had on my show. Um, he wrote, I don't remember the exact name of the book, forgive me, but he wrote a book based on the account of the Roswell incident in 1947. Which his father was a part of. Yes, which his father was a part of. So he had a bunch of photos of the debris that his father found and brought home. Uh, he had a bunch of inside accounts of what happened and what they were you know, planning and so on and so forth. It was by far just one of the most. <laughs> it was by far just one of the most interesting shows I think I had in regards to extraterrestrial life. Um, he was very informative, very kind guy, uh, very down to earth. You know, yeah. I know we've had people in the past that are just really out there. Uh, so by far that was that was one of my favorites. Uh, another one was one by. Uh, Forgive me. It's one of the. It's it goes one of two ways. It's either Milton Gordon. Is that the right Milton Gordon or Gordon Milton? I can't remember which comes first. I think it's Milton Gordon. Milton Gordon. Okay, so uh, I had a guest on by the name of Milton Gordon. He wrote a book called um, The Encyclopedia of Vampires, I believe. Yes. It's that book. Yeah. And it's a huge book, and that has gotten me on topics about Kali, which is a goddess. Um, and just all kinds of different vampirism stuff. And he was so infor- – I mean, this guy is a walking encyclopedia of vampires, literally. That's why he wrote the book. <laughs> I mean, he knows all his stuff. And, and there's things in there about uh, dark histories, dark mysteries. <laughs> no two perspectives, though, unfortunately. So. <laughs> but, you know, he, he, there's a lot of stuff about the past. There's, there's a lot of stuff about movies and books and today's society, uh, what – about to come about, you know, what's going to be about or come about, I guess, in the paranormal community mm-hmm. regarding vampires. And we talked about the uh, the basic history and belief and legend of vampires. Um, we're talking about Vlad and Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bathory, uh, vampires who drink blood, psychic vampires uh, who drain people's energy. I mean, we talked about all kinds of stuff. It was that show was interesting because I think we had to do a we we actually had to do. A, two-parter? A re-show. Well, no, not a two-parter, because the first time I had him on, I was having difficulty with oh. the sound. And I couldn't get him on. For whatever reason, I just have, wasn't having trouble connecting, you know? Yeah. And so I had to tell him, like, I'm sorry, I have to cancel. But he was nice enough to reschedule for the following week. Uh, I don't know if he was busy or... And then the third episode, with which Justin had the privilege of speaking to this person himself as well for uh, 
Forgotten Truth Radio. Or Paratruth Radio. They have so many radio Parasite stations, guys. Parasite Radio. No, no, no. I'm talking about Paratruth. Um, it, it's uh, David Roof. Roof, Roof. Oh, David Roof, no. Yeah, yeah. David Roof, no. Um, David Roofies? No. No. Well, I was, I was about to say Ruffalo. I was like, wait a second, that's an actor. <laughs> that's not David. Uh, that's Mark. Uh, yeah, David Roof, no. Uh, I had him on for Got in Truth Radio. And then, and, and it was a great episode. It's something I really enjoyed on Got in Truth Radio because we spoke about aliens. And if you guys haven't listened to that particular episode called which episode that was, what number. Uh, um, let's find it really fast. Uh, so while I'm looking that up. Uh, he wrote a book, and he happened to be his sister, and he spoke to people who claimed to have had uh, witnessed alien abductions, and have been a part of an abduction. And he showed them and spoke to them about how he believes these alien abductions are something much more sinister in the fact that they're actually demonic entities that are you know, appearing to them, I guess, and making them believe that they're alien abductions, and that by believing in and calling on the name of Christ would end all these abductions. And in this book, there's a number of accounts um, and cases in which people have, you know, come to Christ, and the abductions have stopped, which goes to the question, do aliens really exist in other right. space, or is it just demonic influence? Even I'm kind of stuck in between the two because on one side I do believe that demons are more than right, you know, and have believe they were abducted. But on the other hand, the universe is so vast. There's a very good possibility that there are other life forms out there, especially when you look at like Mars and we find water on Mars, you know, and all these other little bits of life on other planets. Right, it's a very good possibility. The only thing that I question, though, is why have, don't we have any, like, I guess, significant proof as to alien well, existence? Well, yeah, for alien existence, that's kind of just like Bigfoot. I mean, we don't so – supposedly we did have alien autopsies that the government did, and they were videotaped and everything else. And, uh, you know, it was proved to be a hoax. And um, I'm on the same page with you about – the extraterrestrials and alien abduction on the one end, why would aliens who have mass amounts of technology need to abduct us to study us anyways? Right. Uh, and secondly, I, I don't foresee aliens coming to take us, uh, do experiments on us and then put us back with things shoved in our bodies. Right. Um, so I think the alien abduction part it, it is demonic in nature. It, it, I mean, I, I can't foresee aliens doing things like that. And secondly, I, I do believe that there are extraterrestrials. Have we had contact with them? Is our government in leagues with them, as some people believe? I, I don't know that part. But I do believe there are extraterrestrials out there. We would be very close-minded to think that we're the only life, even if it's just bacteria on another world right um that that's where i stand on it it was episode five that i had, had dave, okay. dave or we had david on but yeah. you weren't there right. I, was, I was in la at the time um but so yeah he was he was a good one for for the paratruth side mm-hmm. don dondiri the only reason he sticks out in my mind so much is because he was so smart me and eric were like <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, mean, I couldn't understand half the stuff he's talking about because <laughs> I'm nowhere near on the level of intelligence as, yeah. as he is, or at least just not as knowledgeable as he is. I yeah. should say, uh, intelligence can go in a number of different directions. Um, but yeah, I mean, the things he was talking about was just, and, and the things I did understand was just, it made a lot of sense, uh, which still didn't keep me from ask, begging to ask him the question. Right. Yeah. Uh, whether or not he believes it could be all demonic activity, which he strongly disagrees with. He, he's either. a man of science, so the spiritual side of things, a lot of scientists either don't believe in God or don't associate the two. Mm-hmm. Which is very, you're always going to get that when it comes to science. And there's a select few that are, uh, they don't even, actually, there's a few, and I could, this could be another episode that we talk about this fully or in more detail, but there are scientists who consider themselves the atheists. 
who have found significant evidence that there is a uh, an intelligent creation as opposed to something like right. Darwin's theory. Or uh, the Big Bang, mm-hmm, what caused you know, the Big Bang. Right. So, I mean, here you have some scientists, and you can look, the, look it up yourself as well if you don't want to wait for the episode that we might do that. Um, but these scientists who don't even believe in God have come to the point where they've researched so much and seen the evidence that it supports a God, you know, and, and of course, me, it's the God of the Bible for other people. They might not believe in that God, you know. Yeah. Um, and I'll be bold and say you should, but, <laughs> <clears throat> um, but it's just interesting to me that there's, you know, you, you, we have eight scientists who are, you know, claiming, look, what I know and what I've been taught for years and years and years, you know, I've, I've got a PhD in this and that, and I'm learning I'm wrong. You know, and yeah. it's very interesting. And you could look into it and you, you could look up creationism and see some of that stuff. And these are people uh, who found that the world and the universe itself is only thousands, maybe 10,000 years old at most uh, compared to the six, you know, 65 million or billion or however many years uh, scientists claim the Earth has been around. But those are good shows, though. Yeah. <laughs> Another show that I... I enjoyed, but it was also all right. This episode, this particular episode I'm about to talk about, okay. was probably one or two weeks after I officially came to know Christ. So I wasn't very smart in regards to holding my tongue back then, and I didn't think very well before speaking. And I don't remember the author's name, but I believe it was a book that was written called uh, "Azale Loves Chocolate and Michael's a Jock." You know, oh yeah, one? yeah, you yeah. That one. And this, I forgot. I forgot about her. Yeah. Actually. And so this this particular woman was on, and she discussed her book with us. And she her claim is that she can speak to angels, and has spoken to Jesus, and speaks to him on a number of occasions where she's actually eye to eye with. Him. That was an episode you weren't able to be a or you no, no, only I was you there. were. I, I was there because it was again at your apartment, um, and I got yelled at by you several times. <laughs> uh, um. But, you know, and, and speaking to angels and stuff like that, that's just something I don't believe in. Um, I mean, I believe you could speak to them, but I don't believe they'll necessarily speak back and have one-on-one conversations and show themselves to you. And You know, it's a long story. You know, obviously there's certain times and cases where that may be. But, yeah. Um, to do it for a normal, you know, daily living or whatever, I don't believe it. But uh, because I was so new to my faith, I was, I was very – almost too confident um and unfortunately had a few words and put her in a place that she probably didn't want to be and you know i was justin had told me to back off a couple times which eventually i did but i think that's the reason i remember it so much because it was it wasn't a good episode on my hand it was it wasn't my brightest get passionate about something even religion be passionate about it light and goodness into your life right so of course you were excited and for anybody who's new to religion i mean they they are going to push the limits of other people's faith and Mm -hmm. all that so yeah and you were you were new to it once again so Mm -hmm. you've actually calmed down quite a bit not to mention you've learned a lot I have learned a lot. You know, once I got Forgotten Truth Radio, it kind of changed things when I was on my own. Yeah. Um, but as anyone who knows me and knows the show, obviously I'm still very much going to speak my mind on certain matters <laughs> if I feel drawn to do so. But As I you should. People. Two perspectives. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'm not going to undercut people and, you know, make them feel, I don't know. One show that I'm really proud of you was um von brashler who claimed he was a psychic and uh not only were you good but he also kind of like agreed i don't know if they're demons or not i just know what i'm i'm seeing and hearing so for somebody who is not necessarily a christian because there are christians that don't believe exactly how what you're saying that there's there is human spirits they're not they're not all demons right uh to agree with you i was like my mind was like <laughs> i was like whoa this is going way better than the last time we talked to a psychic <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah it was 
Von Brashler was was definitely a good episode just just for that fact. I mean, he was a good guest. All of our guests have been great guests, uh, oh, yeah. but just to hear that was awesome. Um, one one of the last ones before we take our last break here that I wanted to mention, which we've been trying to get on the show, just have not had a chance to do it yet, that I had on Parasite Radio was uh, Brad Steger. Uh, not only an intelligent man, but a very well spoken man at that. Uh, he's written numerous books, numerous, numerous books um, about pretty much any topic you can think of and what his his theory and his wife's theories are on the paranormal world. Um, I forget what book I had him on for. I think it was Real Vampires, Werewolves, and Other Creatures of the Night or something to that effect. Um, and... This guy, I mean, on the intelligence level of Don Dondiri, um, but knew that I wasn't on the intelligence <laughs> level of him, so dumbed the the uh, terminology down enough that I could understand what he was talking about. <laughs> uh, so we are definitely going to try and get him on at the beginning of the year. He's just had a lot of things going on, uh, which is completely understandable. Uh, so we will get him on here within the next month or so i'm hoping because getting new guests on is going to be a cluster you know what this um so we're going to take a quick break folks you're listening to pair truth radio right here on blog talk radio we will be right back peekaboo peekaboo smile smile buddy come on smile oh honey he's still not smiling maybe he's not a smiler Yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. You know how boys are. Or maybe he's teething. Oh, poor baby. I think his gums hurt. Maybe he's just tired. Or maybe his tummy hurts. He didn't eat that much. Maybe he's not ticklish. You think maybe he's scared of a dog? Maybe he'll outgrow it. Maybe it's a phase. Maybe he just doesn't like smiling. Maybe he has autism. And we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs or see a doctor today for an autism screening. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. And it can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Today in school, I learned a lot. It's Thursday night and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... Could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Are you ready? Are you prepared? What if some cataclysmic event shook your every foundation? Would you and your family know what to do? My name is Jacqueline Druga, host of the Apocalypse Dennis Show. Join me every Thursday evening, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Prepper Broadcasting Network. Prepperbroadcasting.com, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We're there for your survival needs. Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'd like to report a 
bear sighting? Location. In the forest, near the side of the road. No need for alarm, sir. The forest is where bears live. But this was no ordinary bear. No ordinary bear? At one second, I'm having a smoke taken in the view. Next thing I know, I am face-to-face with Smokey Bear. Let me guess, Smokey had a tip for you. He did. He must have seen me toss my cigarette on the ground. He told me never to do that because it only takes one spark to start a wildfire. He's a smart bear. Did you know that 9 out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans? That means 9 out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. That's what Smokey said. I had no idea. That's why Smokey's famous, and you're not. Good point. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference. Because 9 out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent... I'm in almost every school bus and classroom. I go to school with your children. We say the Pledge of Allegiance together. You've seen me around the neighborhood, and you've told me I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every four children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. This problem is closer than you think. My teacher tells me we could grow up and be whatever we want. I want to grow up and be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. There's enough food in this country to feed everyone. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide seven meals for kids like me, quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And we are doing our New Year's episode for 2014. Uh, for those of you listening in live on a computer, you can scroll down to the bottom of your screen there and hop in our chat room. You can also call in live, 914-205-5558. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter. You can also email us at paratruthradio at gmail.com. <laughs> So for the 2015 year, what are you looking forward to? Is there any specific movies coming out that you're interested in? Um, movies, no. There's nothing that I'm looking forward to movie-wise coming out. Um, actually, I lied. There's one that's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, there, there's no like huge, you know, major Hollywood, you know, typical Warner Brothers, Universal stuff like that yeah. coming out. Um, but there is a Christian film coming out, and I can't remember offhand what it's called. I was trying to find it earlier today, but I saw a preview for it, and it's about a little boy who is told while growing up that if he had faith the size of a mustard seed, he can move mountains. Well, in this this movie basically, and I don't know the whole plot, or I haven't read up on it or anything, but according to the trailer, it comes a point where his faith is so strong that he starts being able to move things and like heal people and stuff like that. Even to the point where he actually looks at a mountain that's in his, like, mm. in the, uh, I guess uh, that the village is sitting by or the town and he has the faith and there's a huge earthquake that starts to happen. And whether or not that means he's actually moving a mountain or what, I don't right. know, but it seems pretty cool and pretty interesting. Um, and that's, that's something I look forward to seeing. I, another thing that I'm looking forward to actually comes out January, to, I can't remember if it was January 12th or January 24th. It might be 24th. Um, I told you about it. I've talked about it on the show uh, back in October. A movie called The Remaining by Affirm Films. It had a limited release in theaters, mm. and I happened to see it at a uh, film festival. So they did get enough views on it that uh, they're bringing it out full it, stream? No, it is coming out DVD. Oh, a DVD and Blu-ray, January twenty-fourth, I believe. Uh, so you'll be able to rent that or buy it, um, depending. On, I don't know. So I know some people don't even care to rent; they just buy films, even <laughs> they haven't seen it. I'm one of those people sometimes. <laughs> um, but it's a, that's a really cool horror Christian film, which a lot of people think Christian film and horror don't work together. But I think you change your tune if you were to see this film. It's definitely one I want to see because it's. Something that kind of isn't touched on from a Christian's perspective. Movies about all that, or yeah. people being um, 
So that's definitely one that I would like to see. Yeah. And I know there's like, there were some people who questioned, because cause obviously not everything in the film is straight up legit to what it says in scripture. Oh. Um, but it was being used on the film, which pretty much any film that you shoot, you're going to have creative licensing. Right. So the story's not always going to be 100% accurate. But when you're writing a film, you know, for for the theatrical release, you're going to want to make sure the film is something I guess, are pleasing to the eyes, you know, and and to the person's mind and what they're going to witness. Yeah. And the one thing uh, that the senior vice president of a firm film said was that he wanted to make sure that when they shot this film, they didn't want people to just disappear in the rapture and then have clothes floating down. Because in the scriptures, God's going to take, like, people who believe in him, he's going to take those people completely, not just the spirits, not just the soul, oh, but the whole body right. just disappear. And he thought that if he were to do that, it would almost come off comedic, you know. And obviously, right. like in real life, it probably wouldn't be so comedic if you write it. Right. But in a film aspect or a film world, it's a little weird because yeah. it's supposed to be this horror film, and you know, you just <laughs> see people like close floating around. Uh, so instead, showing the souls disappear, so pretty cool because. There's this breath of cold air that comes out of, you know, yeah. shows up when they breathe. And they hit the ground, and their eyes kind of fog over. Oh, as yeah. Blinds, to kind of show that the soul's been taken. Yeah. And it just brings in this bit of, like, I guess this fear factor, you know? Yeah. Seeing that. And they, they look out over the balcony, and there's all these dead people. Yeah. Um, yeah and, but it's really cool, because they have the horn, the first, like the first horn that's blown, the second horn that was, that's blown, uh, according to the scriptures. Uh, that marks the beginning of the oh. simulation and, and, you know, and every point from there on. Uh, and, of course, they also bring in these demon-like creatures, the locusts, basically, the, like, demonic locusts. But it's, it's definitely something that's pretty cool. I mean, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. I was like, <laughs> honestly, I was worried about it. So I was like, a Christian film <laughs> touching, you know, oh, the yeah. horror genre is not some, it's something I want to do. Yeah. But I, I couldn't picture it. So uh, yeah, it's a good film. And to go through the whole film without a single swear word, because we all know horror films these days after yeah. stuff, that, blah 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 blah. But it's a good film. Good film if you can handle horror films. If you're listening to Paranormal Radio, you probably can handle <laughs> yeah. a horror film. <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to think if there's any coming out that I'm looking forward to. None pop in my head that are must season theater or anything like that. Um, hmm. I'm I am looking forward to Paratruth Radio turning a year. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Um I'm also looking forward to the second half of season ten of Supernatural. Oh yeah. What I would hope would be the last second half of <laughs> Supernatural. But that's not gonna happen. This is going to be season eleven. I'm pretty confident with that one. <laughs> You haven't heard anything, yes or no? Just assuming. Um, I it's think going they've so been well? given the okay for the eleventh season. <laughs> um, I know their ratings are up higher than ever. So, <laughs> and it's funny because everybody I know will be like, "These the past couple seasons have been horrible, but they keep getting yeah. more." Well, you know why? It's because they. All right, it started off with all these. I guess it originally kind of touched base more with guys, you know, in the younger generation. Yeah. Um, but nowadays, especially now that, you know, these two characters, Jensen Ackles and uh, Jared Bidlecki's characters are older, um, they're, they're they're going with the whole sex appeal thing now. Oh. There's a whole lot more women tuning in to these <laughs> last few seasons than there ever have been before. Um, and that's pretty much now their main, you know, <laughs> if you ever watch them online. <laughs> so went from young Teen to twenty-ish age guys to a bunch of women. They're a bunch of cougar-like women, probably <laughs> in their eighties. Oh, Either, w- <laughs> <laughs> Either way, they've they've changed the uh, the viewing. <laughs> yeah. From one to the other. Yeah. So that that's go- that show's going strong. Um, <laughs> and, and they brought. I know. I think. I don't know if Eric Kripke really does much more with it anymore. Uh, as of season five, he turned it over, but I think he might have come back oh. for a few episodes. Uh, but they also have uh, Robert Singer. He is 
he's back. He was gone for right, the yeah. first uh, six, seven, I think season seven, six through eight, he was gone. Uh, came back for nine and ten. So they kind of got a little better. Um, well, when you lose a creative mind for the show yeah. and get somebody new, it's obviously well, going to change a little bit. Yeah, but... and you know what? It's like it's cool that they're bringing in new viewers, you know. Yeah. But there have been a lot of complaints from the original viewers, the people who pretty much got the show to where it's at. Because you know? we all right. know it's not necessarily the creators nor the actors who bring the show from where it's at. It's the people who view it. Yeah. You know, it's the fan base that really drive the show and make it what it is um, and make it bigger and better by bringing in more money, I guess. Yeah. Um, and they had a lot of original fans just complaining about what the show was becoming. Like, all right, well, we got to hire yeah. back a couple people because this isn't, this isn't working for us. Um, which is cool, though, because I respect that. Any show who, you know, yeah. believes and wants to contribute to their original fan base, that, I mean, that's a cool show. Yeah. Because there's other shows out there that be like, oh, screw the original fan base, you know? <laughs> yeah. But... So that, I'm looking forward to the second half of season three of Arrow. Yeah. That'll be that. I'm not going to talk about that on air. <laughs> <laughs> Only because there's a lot of people who haven't seen the first half of season three. He's got three a crush yet. on the main character. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, that's something you and I should, could talk about later. I don't know if I've talked to you about it. But um, you've given me a it, little snippet of information yeah. about the show. Yeah, so I'm not gonna talk about that one because I mean, anyone who watches Supernatural knows about what happened because they look it up or you know it leaks out somewhere. Yeah, but Arrow's a different story altogether. Um, but interestingly enough, the last episode of Arrow for the uh, mid-season finale kind of starts bringing us to a paranormal aspect of this show. Hmm. Um, so it might be something that I will talk about. Um, January 21st, I think. When oh, comes, when season's when over? Oh, uh, no, when it comes back on. Oh, when Because it comes we back. won't know what's really about to happen until the first episode of the second half oh, of the season. Oh, yeah. So, if it does what I and many other fans think is going to happen, that would be something to talk about. Comic book world, they're also paranormal. So right, kind of yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it in regards to entertainment, I guess. <laughs> Mar April, March and April, well, March, yeah, for this sh this show, um, I think for at least for me, I plan, folks, on being a part, of it, but I will be working on a film set. Um, yeah. Through March and April, it's a 27 day project, so it's about a six week project. Um. I don't foresee Sunday as being a problem for shooting, but you never know. No, yeah. We, we most likely won't be shooting on the weekends. However, I will be still taking classes while shooting. Yeah. I'm going to be spending 12 to 15 hours a day on set, five days a week, plus having to do any uh, any other studies, whether it's you know studying for a test or getting certain homework done or whatever on the weekends. Um, and working out, of course. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that's something I look forward to, but hopefully we'll, it'll all work out for the show. And we'll... Even if there are shows that we're having guests on for me to run solo, as much as Eric would like to be there, we'll we'll get the, uh, the ball rolling with it. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff coming up in 2015. I'm switching schools, so we'll see how all that goes. Hopefully it'll be better and once we get our funding, um, we will get the show improved for you guys as well. Um. <laughs> I wasn't sure what that was. <laughs> and now, just like on Night Soccer's, Eric's going to play with the sound bites that, like I used to do at the end of Night Soccer. <laughs> oh, man. So, definitely a lot of good things coming for 2015. Most importantly, Paratruth Radio will still be going in 2015. Uh, yep. <laughs> so, uh, if you guys have any concerns, questions, 
suggestions, definitely hit us up in our chat room while we're on air. Uh, you can call in 914-205-5558 when we're live. You can also find us Facebook, Twitter, email, paratruthradio at gmail.com. For those of you fans that are absolutely crazy about my cousin, I'll post his actual phone number on Facebook later <laughs> on, on the Paratruth <laughs> <laughs> fan page. Um, and for those that are crazy about Eric, I will just post a nude photo on <laughs> Facebook Ooh. for everybody to see. Um, <laughs> and then people will ask, how did you get this photo? You don't want to know. It was a very long time ago, <laughs> different times, called uh, for different measures. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, short time. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you uh, that uh, listen live every week, we appreciate you guys. Uh, we would not have a show with, I mean, we would, but. <laughs> we don't need you, but we like having you around. It's what no. We would be talking to dead air. So we do appreciate you guys listening live every Week. There was no pun intended as to him saying dead air, considering we. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. And I I do have to say that this show is definitely a much evolutionized show compared to Night Stalkers and mm-hmm. Parasite and even Forgotten Truth because you were mm-hmm. doing it yourself. Oh yeah, I agree. Um, and I also want to just thank everyone out there for tuning in and whether you're listening live or just, you know, checking out the podcasts, uh, it's awesome being able to, just to know that you're listening. Um, I know we don't always have people call in uh, or send <clears throat> emails or get us in, up, hit us up in chat all the time. Uh, but just the fact that you're listening is an honor. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's humbling, you know, to know that you're all tuning in. And I think, you know, since this is like the last episode of the year, I'm going to go ahead and mention probably one of our biggest fans. Uh, and I'm just going to say her first name, Jerry. Yeah. Jerry has helped us uh, quite a bit the past few months in regards to topics, uh, even helping finance us a little bit. Yeah. She um, helped us with our first Indiegogo campaign. With our uh, first campaign. Indiegogo. Um, you know, right now she's in Thailand, I believe. Um, <clears throat> and you know, yeah, I just my computer shows in again. <laughs> um, I just want to send out a thank uh, for her joining us. I know she's t- called in a few times and has spoken with us. Uh, and yeah, thanks, Jerry. And actually, she's a an official producer of Paratroops Radio is because of the Indiegogo. Yeah. Um, account uh another person that i would love to thank is shelly not only did she encourage me to talk to eric about getting the show started again she's also a uh producer for the show she's helped numerous occasions getting guests started for us and uh would not definitely be doing this without her help so i do want to throw that out there as well um for any listeners who aren't getting acknowledged we love all of you we unfortunately don't know all of you just because we don't know who listens to the podcast it just gives us a number so <laughs> for number not names but we do appreciate all of you but we'd uh, like to get to know you by name so yeah. feel free to email us you know uh get it support us get on the facebook page be like hey guys great show or that show sucked you guys be honest, guys. Yeah. Come on, be brutally honest. We're adults. We can handle it. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you tell us we suck, we're probably gonna do worse the next week just to upset you. So, <laughs> I mean, it's all fun and games. You it, don't care. It's a little bit upsetting just because we do take it seriously. Yeah, we don't get paid for it, but yeah. we and do. Yeah, our we best. are goofballs, and you know, if you've listened to any part of this show, obviously you know that by now. Yeah. Or any show. For that yeah, matter. there was a there's a guy in the BTR Facebook, uh, BTR hosts Facebook group that says him and his wife do this full time, which means they get paid for it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we 
which would be great, especially with us being in school. But um, mm -hmm. we do appreciate all of you. Absolutely. Either way. So with that said, I think I'm going to send out a little Parachute Radio howl for all our fans out there. Sounds good. To me. That's our way of thanking you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Not. I would do it myself, but... Don't you dare touch me! Stand back! No! No! <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. That's what Eric that sounds like when he's drunk. Hey, I haven't been drunk in years. <laughs> I was looking for that one. Where was it? Applause is at the very top. Most of these are in alphabetical oh, order. No. <laughs> there it is. I can't, I can't. See, it's because it's Apocalypse Nana commercial. It's <laughs> yeah. so long that it takes my... All right. Uh, so for those of you guys uh, going out for New Year's Eve, uh, be safe. No drinking and driving, please. Uh, for everybody who's staying at home, please stay at home. Do not go getting drunk and going to Even other parties. if you're parties. not getting drunk, just don't leave the house. Cause yeah. It's, some of the most accidents are there. And if, if you're not getting an accident, you can pull over by a cop. Yeah. So um, <laughs> definitely be safe. And uh, me and Eric, We'll be in the same room at the same time We're for New Year's for a like while. We're going to be partying like 2014 15. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's going to be? Huh? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a long show. <laughs> We're both very slapstick happy. Tickle tickle. <laughs> Um, so for you guys, be safe, be happy. I think we're going to cut out early here. So have a happy and safe new year, everybody. Mm -hmm. Take care. We'll see you next year. All right. And on that note, I'm Justin. And I'm Eric. See you guys in a couple weeks. Peace. Hear that? It's the sound of rewards points in use. Because when you transfer credit card balances from your holiday spending to the ESL Rewards Visa Signature Credit Card, you earn points to accumulate and redeem for cash back to help shape up your finances. A special 12-month intro rate also saves you money on balances transferred from higher rate cards. So make the ESL Rewards card your go-to choice every day. Apply online at ESL.org Visa. Membership subject to eligibility. ESL is an equal opportunity lender.